Christmas is going to be different this year. Different and probably even more meaningful. In past Christmases, if we're going to be really honest, it has all become about parties, gift givings, traffic, shopping, vacations, and reunions. This year, we're all locked down and we are unable to do what we normally do during the Christmas season. Maybe God has our attention now. So let's try to maximize this opportunity. Let's talk about the real meaning of Christmas, shall we? Today, let me talk about hope. Something that we've all been hearing that pertains to Christmas. But what does hope found in the Christmas story really mean? Let's define hope first. Hope is a person or a thing in which our expectations are centered. The person or thing in which you have placed your confidence as related to your future. Therefore, hopelessness is the feeling that comes with knowing that the person or thing in which I place my hope on will not or cannot come through. We all hope on something or on someone. We started on placing our hope on our parents when we were growing up. As we grow older, we started placing our hope on different things. We place our hope in relationships, in our jobs, in the economy, in our dreams, in our leaders. And if you are old enough, you must have realized that any of these objects of hope can dissipate in an instant. Broken relationships, jobs that are lost, stock market crushing, unfulfilled dreams. This pandemic, if there's anything it has taught us, is that all of these things can come crashing down at an instant. Hope is like a ladder. We lean against a wall. We trust that the wall will support our dreams, our security, and our future until it doesn't. And when the wall starts breaking down, unable to support our ladder, our hopes, we feel hopeless, helpless, and powerless. Throughout the Bible, we are asked to place our hope in God. Psalms 33:22 says, May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. We are invited to put our hopes not on this broken world and what it offers, but in God alone. This is where the Christmas story comes in. If Jesus of Nazareth is a historical being, born in the Middle East in the, in the first century, lived his life serving the people and proclaiming the kingdom of God for 33 years, died on the cross and then resurrected on the third day, then there is a reason to place our hope in this person who proclaimed himself to be God. This video is not about discussing the historicity of the person of Jesus, maybe in the future, but there are historians, both ancient and current, Christians and non-Christians, that attest that Jesus of Nazareth was born indeed in the first century and lived his life just like the gospel said. So if Jesus is a real person, and I believe that he is, we can trust Him and we can place our hope in Him. We are invited to lean our ladders against God's wall of hope in His love that Jesus' death on the cross represents. The only way to maintain our hope in this broken world is to place our hope in God. But why are we hesitant to place our complete hope in God but instead continue to place our hope in things that we ourselves know is broken and will soon disappoint us? Could it be because we aren't convinced that this world is broken? That we can try to fix this through education, surgery, drugs, exercise, planning? Yes, we'd continue to live life, build loving relationships, pursue progress, build things, plan for the future. But do we place our hope in these things? I pray that we don't. We live in an imperfect, uncertain world. We can only be secured in the certainty of God's love. So my question for you today is this. Where are your hopes leaning on? Is it on a thing or a person other than Jesus? 
we are invited to lean our hope on God's love alone. This is Arnold and this is One Point. If you find this video useful, please click subscribe, like, and that notification bell. See you again next video. Merry Christmas.